Hi guys, so it has been a while and I have finally gotten around to doing my kitchen countertops. Um, this is the before and this is the after of doing cabinets and the flooring and replacing hardware and this is how the countertops look now. And this is the finished look with the new faucet installed. So the intro is going to be kind of long because why not? Um, if you guys want to skip ahead, I believe it's about a minute or two into the video of me talking. So if you don't want to hear me talk, you can go ahead and skip. All right. So I'm very happy with how the marble look turned out on my countertops. I have granite countertops, which is a natural stone. Um, it's original to the house and I don't like dark colored countertops even if I clean them I still just don't feel 100% secure that they're clean you know what I mean so I always wanted lighter countertops that had that marble look but I just didn't want to spend the money so I did some repairs on my countertops filled in cracks sanded cracks <laughs> and got the look that I wanted for a more affordable price okay so very pleased with how this turned out if you guys want to see you know how I did this you know just please keep on watching please pay attention to what I'm saying in the video I know a lot of people you know you guys will watch a video and then ask questions about things that are already answered in the video if you have a question about something just simply rewind the answer is probably in the video okay so I added a lot of gold accents to my kitchen that's just what I like you can do whatever you like in your kitchen you know it all depends on your taste and what makes you happy in your home all right so yeah let's get started so the first thing you're going to want to do is clean as much as you can especially your backsplash there is a video for this backsplash in um, my kitchen makeover playlist okay and I also went ahead and removed my kitchen faucet using a basin wrench this one is the Linux and it is a bit overpriced it's like twenty dollars and just because it extends and honestly I would not buy this tool again it is a waste of money so just buy the regular basin wrench because I had to use both hands to get this tool to work okay and I was having a hard time taking out um, another part of the faucet so I had my neighbor come over and help me a bit and yeah so I got it out so as you guys could see there is damage from water this big crack in the front part of my faucet was actually here um, my faucet countertop was actually here when we bought the house and I kind of quickly filled it with epoxy when we first got here because I didn't want water to continue to go into the crack and make it bigger so this epoxy that I am chiseling out here is about four years old okay and the reason why I'm chiseling it I'm not actually taking it out I'm smoothing it out because when I had first put it in I kind of did it in a rush because I had things to do so today I'm just gonna smooth it out and sand it down as much as I can and behind the faucet here there was a tiny crack that ended up turning into a very very large crack because of water from the kids you know washing dishes and them just letting water go behind the faucet and not drying it up so the water you know made the crack bigger i actually used jb weld to fill that and i used my heat gun to dry it it took about five to ten minutes to dry completely i do suggest not holding the heat gun too close or too far away you know and try to keep it in the area of the JB weld so it can dry completely after I filled in the cracks sanded I'm gonna go in with my painters tape and tape off my backsplash there's also a video on the backsplash for my stove okay and there's a video for my cabinets and um, also the flooring um, when you do your countertops if you choose to do them that's your choice okay, I'm not telling you to do anything but if you choose to do them make sure you prep it's very important you don't want to do something like this and not prepare your kitchen because if you make a mess it's gonna be very hard to clean up okay 
So I use um, drop cloth or plastic, painting plastic to cover all my cabinets and to cover most of my floors where I will be working with epoxy. So I did sand my countertops as you guys saw. I sanded them using a 80 grit sandpaper by hand just to rough them up a bit because my um, granite countertops did have a shiny coat on them but the coat was like wearing off it wasn't like perfect so I just roughed it up just a bit and here I am priming it using um, a bonding primer so you can use any primer you want this is the sincere sincere primer I don't know if I'm saying that right but um, I just went back and sanded in front of my countertop again just to make sure I had it really smooth it didn't have to be 100% but I didn't want it to be bumpy, okay, because once the epoxy goes on it, if there's any little tiny, tiny bumps, the epoxy will just level out and make it nice and smooth, okay? I also use tissue papers to fill in the holes um, where the faucet um, pipes and things go so that the epoxy doesn't go in there and fall underneath into the cabinet, all right? So you're going to prime everything, and I'm just using a foam roller, not a um, fiber roller or regular paintbrush roller. This is a foam roller so that I don't get any extra fibers on my countertop. Okay. Once you have your primer on and it's completely dry, I actually use two coats of primer. You can go ahead and use your white paint. I'm using a um, enamel paint. Okay. So again, I'm using an enamel type paint. Um, this is the same paint that I use for my cabinets. It's not a latex paint. I chose this paint because it's more sturdy and I like how the white looks after a while because most paints oxidize when they dry. Okay, it stays nice, bright, and white. This is the Bare Alkyd paint. Okay, so I'm going to put on my paint. I actually put on two thin layers of this paint and waited for them to dry. I waited about an hour and an hour and a half in between, um, not in, in between coats, but an hour and a half from primer to paint. When I put on the first coat of paint, I waited about um, 30 minutes for the first coat to dry. And then I went back and then I let it dry again for an hour. Okay. And I did switch my paint roller. I did not use the same roller from the primer because I wanted to make sure that my countertop was still bright white. All right. And again, make sure you tape everything off, cover your floors, okay? You can get craft paper um, from the dollar store as well to cover your floors. If you guys want to know what epoxy I'm using, it is in the description box. Just click the little thing there that says show more and it will drop down i am not sponsored by any um epoxy company or paint company or any of that all items products used in this video were purchased with my money okay most of these supplies you can get at your local um wally world i say wally world because they're not sponsoring me or anything like that and they make enough money so they don't need me to say their name but you know what i mean you can also get um, buckets, paint brushes, things like that at the dollar store. The brushes that I used for um, this video I actually got at the dollar store, you guys. Okay. So this attachment I actually got at Wally World. I think it was $4 and I put it onto my drill to help mix my epoxy. Follow the instructions on the epoxy. I just use both parts of epoxy. I didn't make a special measurement. I just filled me me i just filled my um container with both parts of the epoxy and added in my enamel paint the same paint that i use to do the countertop okay and this is again not a latex paint this is the bare outfit paint and again bare is not sponsoring me i prefer their white paint for how it looks over other white paints and i like how sturdy this paint is as well so once you have that mixed, you don't need a attachment to mix it. You can mix it by hand using a paint stick, but the attachment does help speed things up. Okay. 
once your countertops are dry and you have your epoxy mix you want to get this poured onto the countertop within five minutes because it starts to warm up and here I am using a foam roller to roll it out you don't want to right away roll it over the edge you want to spread it all over the countertop and kind of keep it from the edge kind of keep it about um, an inch or two away from the edge until you have it all over the countertop once you have once you've spread it all over the countertop, then you can, you know, start rolling it over the edge just a bit because you don't want it to quickly drip over the edge and then most of your epoxy is gone, okay? So you get about a 35 to 45 minute window to work with this epoxy before it starts to get super thick and starts setting up and it makes it a bit harder to work with. So. Um, I do suggest, you know, having your pets out the kitchen. If you have children, have them out the kitchen. Wear a mask. I am wearing a mask. Wear gloves to protect yourself. Um, even wear goggles if you can, okay? Especially if you're taking out a faucet under the sink because um, I was wearing eye, eye protection when I was under the sink and I kind of took them off a bit because I was getting frustrated trying to take out the faucet. And then when I was under there without my eye protection, um, a tool fell on my face and it hurt a lot. So make sure you wear eye protection if you're under the sink trying to take out a faucet, okay? And even if you're doing epoxy, wear eye protection. So as you guys could see, I am rolling it out. I did speed it up a bit, but like I said, you have 45 minutes to work with the epoxy to spread it out and don't roll it over the edge right away. Keep it about an inch away from the edge of the countertop before you spread it out and then once you have it all over the countertops then you can go back and roll the edge and it will just loop over the edge okay here you see me pour some closer to the edge because it was starting to get a little thick okay because i do still you know i have a baby so I had to pause in between these um, rolls because my baby was crying and I can't really focus with a crying baby. So I had to stop, you know, calm her down for a couple minutes and then come back. Like it was a lot going on. So with editing, you don't see that. It just looks like I'm in here the entire time. But, you know, mommy duties, you know, I have to stop, go take care of her, take the glasses off, take the, the mask off, take the gloves off, everything. Go deal with her and then come back with everything back on. So. If you can, um, you know, get someone to help you if you have a young child. If you have animals, put them somewhere. You don't want animals running in and out of your kitchen while you're doing this because you don't want their fur to fly up and then land on your countertop because that's going to be a lot of work to clean up. Once you have everything rolled out nice and thin, about one eighth of an inch, you don't want it to be super thick. Okay, you're gonna go in and make your colors. I'm using two different shades of gray, a dark one and a light one. And I chose to use spray paint instead of latex paint because I did do some samples using latex paint and I did do some samples using spray paint. And I've noticed that the latex paint after a while oxidizes and has a slight yellow tinge or weird yellowish look to it and then the spray paint does not here you guys I'm so sorry I don't know what happened but a video dropped a clip dropped from my camera it went 1193 and then 1195 1194 is missing it's in the wind I don't know so what happened here is once I got my colors mixed I used my lightest shade of gray first and I kind of like I want to say I kind of draped the color streaked it over the areas of the countertop where I want my veins to go you can do whatever style vein you want if you want you can go on Google image look up some marble or some stones that you like if you like how the veining looks use that image as a reference to guide you and um, yeah design based off of what you personally like I didn't want the countertops to be too too marbly looking but I also didn't want them to be too too white okay like too plain I just wanted a good amount of marble and um, a good amount of white so that my countertops look nice and clean okay so this is the lightest shade of gray spray paint Okay, and you can use any spray paint you like, it, you know, that's totally up to you, but I use the one that has like the paint and primer situation and you can use it on 
any surface. So I'm just kind of like blurring out the lines. You don't want them to be too harsh looking. So I'm using a paintbrush. This is a dollar store paintbrush, just like this, and just tapping the areas where I put um, my veins and just tapping it out. This is just kind of blending them out to create like a background shadow shade for the second color. And the reason why I'm using two shades of gray is after looking at different types of marble, different versions of marble, marble either man-made marble or natural marble, it's really not a perfect piece of stone, okay? Unless it's man-made. And even when it's man-made, they try to make it imperfect looking because it's a natural stone. Okay, I'm not saying this is natural stone. I say I'm just trying to copy it as close as I can to what I like. Well, the piece that I saw that I like. So here's the darker shade, and this is pretty much what I did the first time. You see how I'm taking the color out of the container with my brush and kind of like streaking it, but it's not a perfect line. I'm just kind of letting it naturally fall wherever, and I'm actually going back along the lines that I already created, but I'm not putting it directly, like perfectly. I'm kind of putting it off center. Some of them I'm putting like on the side, you know, kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, okay? So once I have my streaks again where I want them, so remember I used a light streak first, and then I went in with a darker streak, okay? This line that I just put down, this darker shade, we are, we are going to blend it out, but we're going to kind of leave like, well, I'm going to kind of leave like just, just a part of it where it looks like you can kind of see the line, but not really. You know what I mean? Because if you look at marble, there's parts of marble where it has a very defined line, like a, like an area where two pieces of stone and sediment come together and it's trapped there. But I hope I'm saying that right. But, um... Yeah, I'm not going to blend it out too, too much because the first shade we used, that's the one that I wanted to blend out. That is my base background shade, like a shadow almost to the darker shade. And then the darker shade is the one that's going to really give me more of that veiny look. Okay, but again, like I said, you do this depending on what you like, okay? And you don't have to get a super expensive paintbrush. All of these supplies will be trash once you're done. So don't get super expensive paintbrushes. You can get a, a pack of four paintbrushes for like $4. Just make sure you use your hands to pull on the brush bristles. Pull on them to make sure there's no any, no, no any, no loose bristles so it doesn't fall into your epoxy. Like prep your brushes before you use them. So rub on them, pull on them. And make sure no, you know, bristles are falling out so it doesn't go onto your epoxy, okay? And again, as you guys can see, I'm just tapping, 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 and blending that out as much as I can. And I did use heat to get the bubbles out. Um, you can also use um, alcohol spray, but I felt as though the alcohol spray makes like these uh, circular patterns that almost look like granite. And I didn't want anything to do with granite. I'm good with the granite. I don't want it anymore. You know, I don't want to see it. So I just stuck with my heat gun. There is a link to the heat gun down below in the description box. And the epoxy that I use is also in the description box. Any videos or anything that's in this kitchen that you see that you want to see how I did it is in the description box. Okay. Kitchen backsplash, um, the herringbone black splash, the cabinet in the description box. All right, you guys. So as you can see, as I went with my heat gun, if there were any areas where the veins looked a little too perfect, like I did it, you know, I kind of blended them out. And like I said, you have about 45 minutes to work with the epoxy where it will pretty much do whatever you want. And as it drips, you see how it's dripping here? You want to use a paint stick to scrape under the cabinet. Make sure the paint stick is under the cabinet or a little putty knife and you just scrape that off. It will consistently drip for about two hours. So you're going to have to keep coming back, you know, every 20, 30 minutes to scrape off drips or else it will dry like that. And even if it dries like that, you can use some sandpaper, put this, your hand under the countertop with the sandpaper and sand it down and it will come nice and smooth, okay? So I'm doing a clear coat on top of my design. I waited about two hours 
to do my clear coat. So this is equal parts of the epoxy. Please follow the instructions on the epoxy that you purchase, whatever brand you use. I don't care what brand you use. Um, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but the brand that I use, which is a um, US based company and they're made in the US, it is in the description box, okay? The last time I did an epoxy countertop, I had some people come on here and complain about me not support, supporting local business and all that. The epoxy is made in the US and I wouldn't use something made in a different country in my countertop where, you know what I mean, I can't, be 100% sure it will uh, work the way I want it to work and the reviews are really good as well. So I did do my research for myself and I suggest you do your research for yourself as well and don't just go by my word. Research, read reviews, look at other videos and see if this is something you really want to do. To do the clear coat I did use a different um, brush. I I mean, not different brush, but new foam rollers. Do not use the same foam rollers you use to blend out the white base epoxy. Um, I think I forgot to tell you, when I mixed my first base of epoxy to white, I added in, um, I want to say about three ounces of the white enamel paint. So the bare alkyd paint to make it white, okay? So if I didn't say it, I'm sorry, so I added in about two to three ounces. You don't want to add in too much paint to mess up the uh, texture of the epoxy. You want to add in up to 5% of a tint to make your epoxy the color you want it to be. So here I decided to put in a soap dispenser. I did not want the soap bottle on my countertop anymore, so I purchased this cute soap dispenser. Um, but the link is in the description box and they are affiliate links by the way. Alright you guys, so I ended up taking the tape off um, and all the stuff that night um, about, I want to say about seven hours after I started the process. You don't want the epoxy to completely dry with the painter's tape in place. It's going to be very hard to take off. So you want to take it off when the epoxy is still kind of soft. Okay, and it takes about 10 days to fully cure, but you can use it lightly, like very lightly. All right, um, yeah, we went through the 4th of July with the countertops. They did very well as far as being stain resistant. They're pretty good. I just clean up once anything that could stain gets on them. And that's that. Very happy with how this turned out. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff, and share with your friends. See you guys soon in another video. Bye.